Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Jump on here real quick. I've got a quick word that I want to share with you. I'll give you just a moment uh, to log on. Uh, if you're joining in from Facebook, hit share. If you're watching this from YouTube, hit subscribe. Uh, tag someone in this. Send this to them. Let them know that there's a word from the Lord. I'm just jumping on really quickly to share this word with you. I'm really not going to be on here long. I know I tell you that all the time. And uh, because I'm a preacher, you know how it is. You get revelation knowledge as you're ministering and you keep going. But this is really going to be brief. I want to share this with you, uh, but I'll give you a moment to log in and uh, let's uh, get ready to get into this uh, word from the Lord, which I believe uh, is a word uh, for victory for your life. I believe that this word uh, is a word that is going to cause change to begin to happen rapidly for you, where you're going to begin to see the things that the enemy tried to steal, what the enemy tried to do, the attacks that were launched against you, you're going to see a divine reversal begin to happen. I just need like uh, maybe I know it's uh, many of you on, but just a few of you to write in uh, the chat uh, in the comments, divine reversal. I just need you to write that really quick. I'm going I'm going to touch on that very briefly, but I want to jump into this and I see you guys logging on from everywhere. Uh, so let me know what city, what state, what country are you joining from? I see Germany on here. I see you uh, logging in uh, from all over the U.S. You're on. You guys are on even from other countries. So thank you so much. I see the comments. Divine reversal. You don't even understand that as you're typing that, you're really prophesying that for your own life and joining in with the thousands of others that are decreeing this over your life. Let's pray. Let's jump right in uh, to this word. Again, I'm only going to be on here very briefly. Uh, so I want you to log in, share it. If you're on Facebook, hit share. If you're watching this from uh, YouTube, hit like, subscribe, and let others know we're live. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for another opportunity to join in uh, with thousands of others from around the world. Uh, Father, connecting into your Holy Spirit. Father, we want to be a part of your mind, your heart. Father, we want to be a part of the move that you're releasing in the earth right now. And so, Father, we lay aside every sin, every weight, everything that would try to take us off course. And Father, we draw close to you. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you would move and minister uh, in the midst of this live broadcast, that you would speak divinely to your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, thank you guys for jumping on. I know uh, I'm on at a slightly different time and uh, I'm just going to be on here briefly. Uh, if you're just logging in, if you're watching from Facebook, hit share. If you're watching, if you don't mind, if you're watching from YouTube, hit subscribe, tag someone in it, let them know there's a word from the Lord. So God began to deal with me about this. And I shared a portion of this uh, at the church that I have the opportunity to serve and pastor at uh, just yesterday. And the Lord said, we've come into a season and a period where uh, all around us, we're going to begin to see money changing hands. So I want to start with this. Because there are many people that have been faithful. There are many people that have been good stewards over what you have. And the Lord's been preparing you, even though you may not see it yet in the natural you may not see it in your bank accounts right now. You may not have the, the physical things to show the blessing of the Lord on your life, but that's okay because the blessing of the Lord comes in many ways. But for those that have been faithful, for those that have been good stewards over what you have, the Lord said this to me, that money is changing hands right now. We're in a season where there is a divine exchange that's happening, where you're going to begin to see those uh, that God is positioning, they, they're being positioned for a major windfall. This means that you're going to be experiencing more abundance and increase uh, than what you ever have. You're going to see the blessing of the Lord hits your life, but it must be met with the right heart, with the right spirit, and with the right motive and purpose. This means that when God blesses you, 
He's blessing you that you might help and be a blessing to others. It is never just for you to sit back and say, look at what I have. The Lord will get something to you because he knows he can get it through you. And so I want to release this, uh, this word, this prophetic word over your life that you're getting ready to see heaven open up over you. For many of you uh, that will hear the words of the Lord and obey him, you're going to see your financial situations completely change. Some of you are not struggling for finances. Some of you are, but some of you are not even struggling for finances, but the Lord's still uh, getting ready to increase you because of your divine assignment. And so the Lord began to tell me, he says, you, you must be careful with how you steward what you have. He said, because what you do now is going to affect uh, the increase or the lack thereof in the days that are ahead of you. So this means that we must be careful how we deal with money. The money systems within uh, our country, the money systems within the world have been corrupt. They've been corrupt for some time. But the Bible says this, that the wealth of the wicked has been laid up for the just. This means that there are people uh, that are carrying what belongs to you. This means that there are those that sit in high places uh, that have hands that are not clean. Those that sit in high places uh, that are hoarding up finances and resources, but it's being held up for the righteous. This means that they are living in your stuff. This means that they are, are temporarily occupying your land temporarily occupying what God said belongs to you. And I have to give you this word because sometimes we don't understand uh, that when we've done everything that we know to do right, we heard the Lord say that the increase is coming, but we're saying, God, we don't know where it's coming from. The next release is not coming uh, from within the four walls of the church. Hear me by the spirit. The next release that we are about to see of a financial breakthrough and blessing is not coming from in the four walls of the church. You cannot expect uh, your brother and sister in Christ to be the only avenue that God's going to use to bless you. The, the increase and the windfall that we're going to see is going to come from the world. There are people who have been hoarding and those that have not been right in their heart, in their spirit, that the Lord says, I'm going to cause what they have to be taken from them. And it's going to be given over into the hands of the righteous. I'm just giving you Bible. I'm giving you word. But but you have to hear this because we're in a season of it now. It's getting ready to happen. And the Lord took me to Joel chapter two. And so I want to read this for you in Joel chapter two and verse twenty four. I want to read uh, just a couple of these verses here. And, and so it says this in Joel 2 and 24, and, and the latter rain shall come in the first month. This is 23. It says that the former and the latter rain is going to come together at one time. When we get to verse 24, it says the threshing floors shall be full of wheat. It says, and the vats shall overflow with new wine and with oil. The threshing floors are getting ready to be full of wheat. The vats are going to overflow with new wine and new oil. Now, this speaks about the Lord releasing abundance in the hands of his people, but it's met right there on the threshing floor. Threshing floor in scripture deals with a place of judgment and separation. Whenever the Lord gets ready to bless, he will often judge before he releases the abundance. This means that the judgment of God comes in and it wipes clean. And so the threshing floor is a separation between those that are his and those that are not his. It is the separation of wheat and tear. And the Bible says that the threshing floor is going to be full of wheat. This represents harvest. It represents abundance coming into your hands. So I got to say this again for you, for many of you that are watching this and many of you that will watch this replay, you must understand that you're coming into a different season now. All around us in the realm of the spirit, the seasons are beginning to change. We are stepping out of a period of waiting. Now, I want you to hear this because many of us have been in a period of waiting over the past several months. The Lord has had me in a pullback season. And he said, what I'm doing now is I'm pulling you in because I'm getting ready to shoot you out. Whenever God gets ready uh, to open up new territory, whenever he gets ready to release abundance, whenever he gets ready to do something major in your life, it is oftentimes preceded by a pullback season. This means it will feel as though you are in a waiting pattern. 
You're in a holding pattern. You're saying, okay, God, I know what you spoke, but what you said does not align with what I currently see. And so when you're in that kind of period where you're waiting, you must trust in the Lord and we must obey him. We must make sure that we follow the plan and the assignment of God to the T because he will put us in that period of consecration. He will bring us in that period where he's allowing things that are within us to be uprooted that are not like him. He's pu putting us in that period when he's doing prep work in your life. This means he's preparing you for the greater that is about to come. And so there are many that are watching me. You've been in a holding pattern. Hear me by the spirit. You're watching this and you're saying, God, what's going on in my life? I don't understand what's happening. I don't understand why it is that I heard you say it. The word's been released over my life, but I don't yet see it. Just because you don't see what God has said does not mean that he's not going to do what he promised you. Sometimes the waiting is necessary in order to prepare you for the next. And prophetically, you're about to step into your next. I just need you to hear me by the spirit. You are about to step into your next. It's going to be a divine moment. And so we're coming out of a season now of a holding pattern and a waiting period. And we're getting ready to step over into a place where the Lord says many are going to be shot out like arrows. Many people that are watching me, you're getting ready to see the abundance of the Lord drop right in your hands. So let's go back to Joel 2. I need you to see this. Joel 2 and 24, it says the threshing floor shall be full of wheat. Wheat represents abundance, harvest. It means that God is about to open up windows of heaven and pour out over you. Then he says, and the vats are going to overflow with new wine. New wine in scripture is symbolic of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It's the it's symbolic of new revelation knowledge being poured out in in and over you. It's symbolic of uh, the spirit of the Lord being released in and upon your life. So he says, I'm giving you wheat, I'm giving you new wine, and then he says, I'm going to give you oil. Oil represents the anointing, the anointing that destroys and breaks the yoke. Whenever you see oil, you must attach it uh, to increase. Why? Because uh, the original text in scripture that says uh, that the anointing destroys the yoke in the original text, it actually uh, says something a little different, even though we translate it that way. Uh, it really says that uh, you will become too fat uh, for the yoke, which means that because of the fatness is the original text, the fatness will break the yoke. Whenever God releases oil upon the life of a person, the anointing comes on you. It automatically comes with expansion. It automatically comes with increase, with fatness, with abundance that comes. And this means that you will outgrow the yoke. When God anoints you, he anoints you to outgrow and to break the yoke off of your neck. I'm telling you this because spiritually, many of you are about to see yokes broken off of your neck. You're getting ready to see the thing that the enemy tried to place to bind you, to put you in uh, a place of bondage. It's about to be broken by the anointing that's on your own life. And so he says here in Joel 2 and 24, the threshing floors are going to be full of wheat. The vats are going to overflow with new wine. He says, and it's going to be oil there. I'm going to place oil over you. That is three parts to this word. Wheat, new wine. And oil is about to be released. But then verse 25 is where I want to get to. And then I'm done. I'm sharing this quickly and, and I'm getting off here. Those of you that uh, this word connects with your spirit, I want you to share it. I want you to hit share if you're watching on Facebook. If you're watching on YouTube, hit subscribe and tag someone in this. Share it with someone. Let them hear this word because there are many people that have been in a place of suffering. And the Lord said to me that I'm going to command the enemy to spit out what he stole. I'm literally going to command the enemy to spit out what he stole from you. The things that were stolen from your family, what was stolen from your bloodline, what was stolen from you uh, in terms of your joy, your peace, in terms of your creativity, your ability, your opportunities. I remember uh, going back just a few years in 2020, uh, I was writing a book and I, I sent this book in to a person and they promised that they were going to help me. They said, I'm going to help you. I'll take you in uh, to the right person that you need to meet. Now, long story short, uh, I waited months. I reached back out to them and they said, well, uh, you know, uh, we're working on it for you. Waited a few more months. I said, OK, something's going wrong here. 
after a while, uh, I noticed that uh, this uh, well-known person put out a book with all my points in it uh, that I had sent. I sent the whole book to them. They put out everything. And I said, man, I never would have thought that a person in that position, well-known, the Lord's using you around the world. Why do you need to steal my material? And so I was upset for uh, all of just a few days. When I tell you this is a true story. Uh, I was upset for a few days. I forgave the person and blessed them. Uh, I, I said, you know what? It's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm to get past it. I forgive them. I bless them. I went back to the Lord and began to pray. And he said to me, he said, that was just one idea. He said, what I have in you, what I've given you is not just one. I'm a God of multiplication. I bless in clusters, meaning when the Lord gives you something, whether it's an answer, an idea, it's never just one. He said, I'm the source of the idea that they stole. He said, and I'm going to give you 10 more in the place of what they tried to steal from you. And so I looked up and all of a sudden, the Lord began to download a uh, prophetic forecast to me and begin to give me that uh, book and begin to give me visions and uh, prophetic words and dreams, which, which took the charts by storm, was number one for so many months. Even two years later, we've seen it number one, and God gets all the glory for that. But I'm saying this to you to say that the blessing of the Lord is about to come on you and what the enemy thought he stole from you what he thought he took from your life, what the enemy did to betray you, to falsely accuse you, to try to cause slander to come against your name, against your assignment, against your purpose and your destiny. You're going to see it all make sense in this season. You are going to see it all make sense in this season, which means that God is about to restore you. Let me read this for you in Joel 2. Joel 2 and 25, it says, so I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust have eaten. I'm going to restore to you the years that the crawling locust, the consuming locust, the chewing locust. He says the great army that, yeah, I sent it among you. I'm now going to restore what was taken from you. I'm going to restore years back to your life. This is a prophetic declaration over somebody that's watching me. God said, I'm not restoring a season back to you. I'm not giving you back a moment that you missed. I'm not just giving you back an opportunity that you once had. And then uh, you thought you missed that opportunity. He said, watch in this season that I'm going to restore years back to you. I'm going to literally begin to go back through the calendar. I'm going to turn the pages of the calendar going back years. I'm going back all the way back to 2001. I'm going back to 05. I'm going back to years that you forgot, and I'm going to cause restoration to happen in your life. He said, watch me restore years back to you of what was taken. Now, in the context of Joel chapter 2, his people had veered away from him. In the context of Joel chapter 2, they rebelled against him, so the Lord allowed an army to come against them, an army of locusts to eat away at their crops. Their crops fell for years. He said, now uh, that time of judgment has passed and now I'm going to restore you. That's the context of Joel chapter two. But there are some of you where the enemy has sent attacks against you. There are some of you where uh, you've gone through so many seasons of attack and so many seasons where you've taken hit after hit after hit. And the Lord says, now I'm going to begin to restore back to you to restore literally means uh, to put you not back to where you were before the attack happened. To restore means to put you back to where you should have been if the attack would have never come. Where would you have been uh, if you never experienced the betrayal? Where would you have been in your life if the enemy never devoured your finances? Where would you have been in your life if, if you were not out in the world? Where would you have been? And so he says, I'm going to restore you, which means to put you where you should have been, to put you where you would have been if the attack never came into, into your life, if you never encountered it before. And that's restoration. The word restoration uh, means to bring the pieces of your life back together. I'm speaking to somebody on this live that's watching me, and you need to hear this word, that the Lord's about to bring the pieces of your life back together. I know you lost stuff. I know you went through hell. I know you went through seasons where you said, God, I, I can't take anymore. I know some of you that are watching me, you went through seasons where you suffered financially and you didn't tell anybody. Nobody knows. You still gave. You still sold to other people. 
You tithe. You did all of the things that you know to do. But you said, Lord, I'm suffering through financially and I don't even know who to talk to about it. I'm going through an attack in my soul and I don't know who to talk to about it. The enemy has sent uh, uh, arrows against my mind that I don't know even who to talk to about it. You, you're a minister and you're watching this. You're a pastor and you've been feeling like you're losing your mind. But can I speak to you prophetically that the attack of the enemy that was sent against your life just failed? What the enemy tried against you, I'm telling you by the word of the Lord that the attack will not prosper, that the weapon that was formed against your mind, the weapon that came against your soul, the demonic weapon that came against your life to try to take you out, it could not kill you. It could not stop you. What the enemy tried failed, and you need to begin to rejoice because God has already given you the victory. I need somebody on here that's watching me out of the seven to 8,000 people that are watching me live between different platforms. I need you to begin to give God praise for the victory that he's giving you in this season. You are coming out of a season of a holding pattern. You're getting ready to step over into a place called manifestation. You're getting ready to step over. Those of you that will follow the plan of God for your life. Those of you that will be obedient to the will of the Lord. You're literally going to see everything change. He said this to me, that money is now changing hands. He said, I'm going to cause many people to begin to prosper in new ways. You're going to prosper financially. You are going to prosper in the areas of your soul. You're going to prosper in the area of peace and joy. You're going to see the Lord make you whole where you've been broken, where things have been out of place. But you must begin to prepare now for what's about to be released in your life. When we get up uh, to the second half of, of 2024, there's so many things that are going to be going on wrong in our world. They already are right now. You heard me come on a few weeks ago and I was sharing the vision that the Lord gave me about blackouts and uh, and all of these kind of cyber attacks, things that the Lord spoke to me about years ago. And I shared with you some years ago. And when we got ready to come into 2024, the Lord said to me, share it again. He said, tell the people what's about to happen with, with cyber attacks and blackouts in social media and our phone lines. Literally weeks after I shared it, we saw uh, uh, the uh, communication go out. We saw blackouts begin to happen. Uh, there were uh, attacks, cyber attacks against the medical industry, against so many different industries. And uh, yes, the Lord began to tell me these things are going to continue to happen. And uh, in a lot of cases, they're going to get worse as we progress on uh, 2024 and beyond. Uh, but he said, at the same time, I'm going to begin to release blessings and outpourings upon my people. We are not going to be adversely affected by the things that are happening in the world if we will obey the will and the word of God. We're going to be under heaven's economy. I've been sharing that over and over again. And you have to understand that heaven's economy is not even money. Heaven's economy is dealing with faith. Heaven's economy deals with the glory of the Lord, and we prosper by the glory of the Lord that comes upon us. His riches are in glory. And so uh, when, when I talk about heaven's economy, I'm not just talking to you uh, about money, natural money. I'm talking to you about a currency that's far above the currencies of this world, and that's called heaven's provision, God's provision uh, over your life. When we say this in scripture, you have to understand that uh, in scripture, when the Bible talks about heaven uh, releasing or heaven rewarding, uh, at a time, heaven was synonymous with the name of God. Because uh, in uh, ancient times, uh, you could not say the name uh, that I'm wearing right now, which is the name of God, uh, which uh, we call uh, or pronounce as Yahweh. Uh, that was a word that you could not say because it was so holy and it still is and so sacred that uh, uh, the Hebrew, uh, ancient Hebrews believed that you could not say that name and they understood the sacredness of that name. Uh, now, whether we actually pronounce it right today is a different story, uh, but it really is uh, seen in our breathing that whenever we take a breath, when we inhale and exhale, uh, it is actually speaking the name that we pronounce as Yahweh, which is the name of God. And so because they could not say the name due to its holiness and its sacredness, 
uh, they would refer uh, to God at times as, of course, God, which is the title given to him. I don't understand people today that think that you can't use the title God. He is our God. He even called himself God, which is why he said, you will have no other gods before me, which means he identifies himself by that title, even though his name is Yah. He identifies himself by the title of God, which means that he is the most high in your life. And he should be. And there should be no other God before him. It's a title similar to a title that you would uh, place on your wife called wife. You call that my wife. Now, you know, she has a name. But when you're speaking about your wife, we understand that you're not speaking about the millions of other wives that are out there. She's your wife, which is why you call her your wife. And so they would call him God as the title because his name is so sacred. And then they would also refer in scripture uh, to uh, God as being heaven. Heaven is releasing. Heaven is uh, going to uh, bring down the blessing. But anytime they spoke of that, they were speaking about Yah. They were speaking about the most high, the, the true and living God, the only living God. And so uh, I'm, I'm saying this to you because when, when I release this word that you're about to see God command the enemy to spit out what he stole from you. You're about to see heaven open up and bring about release. We're talking about the most high Yahweh that's about to pour out on his people. We're coming into a season where you're going to see it months about pouring. It's going to be months of the release of the spirit of God. It's going to be months of abundance being released on the church. I'm talking about the true ecclesia. You're going to see months of this where literally the Lord's about to prepare you to do the very thing that he placed in your heart. Some of you, and, and I know, Many people take this stuff out of context and they go and they push a hyper prosperity message. I'm not giving you a hyper prosperity gospel, even though prosperity is a part of the gospel message. Uh, but I am telling you that there are people that the Lord said to me, I'm going to cause millions to come into your hands for the advancement of the kingdom. This means that based upon your assignment, based upon what you're called to do, God's going to allow mega resources and money to come into your hands. There are houses that must be built uh, to take care of families. There are centers and shelters that must be built in order to feed those that are hungry. There uh, are, are initiatives that we must do, and you're going to need money to do it. And so the Lord's raised up people. He's raised up a Pharaoh that's getting ready to fund a Joseph that's going to funnel money into uh, the tribes of Israel. It's going to cause money to come into Israel. It's going to cause resources to come into the hands of his people. So God at this time has raised up people that don't even serve him. Hear me by the spirit. He's raised up people that some of you think are wicked and they are. He's raised up, and the Bible says this, he said, I raised up Pharaoh. I put him in the position that he's in. I raised him up because I want to demonstrate my power. I raised up the one that you rejected from the church. I raised up the one that you say uh, they are not fit for the kingdom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I raised them up because there's something that I'm going to use them to do in order to push and advance the kingdom. You understand that Pharaoh, during the time of Joseph, he worshiped other gods. Joseph's assignment was not to come in and, and necessarily uh, tell him, stop doing what you're doing. Uh, you've got to come over to believing what I believe. He would demonstrate by his example, but Joseph understood his assignment. He was a father, the Bible says to Pharaoh. He had the wisdom. He had the knowledge. Pharaoh was in place for a specific reason, but Joseph had the assignment uh, to be there to gather the wealth of a nation so that Israel could prosper during the time of famine. God has raised up people that you would never embrace in the church. He's raised up people because he's about to position the ecclesia uh, in places. We're in uh, places of spiritual power, but he's about to cause his people to step over into places of natural authority. Meaning that the blessing of the Lord is about to come from people uh, that, that have wrong hearts, people uh, that are sinners. You're getting ready to see the blessing of the Lord come from their hands into the hands of the righteous. And it's all summed up in that passage that the wealth of the wicked has been laid up for the just. He's allowed them to hold it, but it's getting ready to shift. I need somebody to just post that in the comments. It's about to shift. It's about to shift. My time uh, on this live is just about up, but I need you to get this word. Let me give you these few principles 
And I want you to take this in because many of you are about to be blessed beyond what you could have ever imagined. And I'm not saying this to you for hype. This is what the Lord's been telling me. And I, I begin to teach this uh, on yesterday in my church. And I've got to read this to you. I have to read this to you. So I want you to take these principles down. You need to make sure that you are properly stewarding your money. You have to make sure that you're properly stewarding your money and that you handle it the right way, the God way, because you're going to see God add to you if you pass the test. Now, the Bible says this, Deuteronomy 8 and 18. I need to look at this. It says that it is God who gives us the power to get wealth. And I want to read this for you. Deuteronomy 8 and 18, it says, but remember the Lord your God. That's the key. That's the condition. You must remember the Lord your God to hold him in, in a place in your heart. Then he says, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. So the Lord wants to bless you to confirm his covenant. Hear this word, Deuteronomy 8 and 18. He gives you the ability to produce wealth. And so by this, he confirms his covenant with you. So when the blessing of the Lord comes upon you, you can't help but have outward things to show your peace, your joy, your wholeness. And then he causes things to be added to you, according to Matthew 6 and 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. He's going to cause people to start giving to you. He's going to cause favor to come on you. Things you didn't ask for are going to drop right into your hands. You weren't looking for the door to open, but the door is getting ready to open. There's a Deuteronomy 8 and 18 blessing coming on you where he's giving you the power to get and produce wealth. Somebody needs to take that word. Now, listen, I want you to see this also in Ecclesiastes 5 and 10. Next point. You got to make sure that you are not a lover of money. And the Lord is preparing your heart and he's getting ready to open up windows to bless you. You've got to make sure that your affection is on the right thing. The Bible tells us that uh, the love of money is the root of all evil. We cannot chase after, lust after, and, and love money. You got to make sure you break that and sever that unhealthy connection and relationship with money. Money is simply a tool that is used to serve your purpose in the earth. And the, the quicker you understand that, the more God will be able to trust you with more. He's not going to trust you with more and you're putting it above him. He's not going to trust you with things and you're worshiping those things. And so you've got to take the idolatry down. And there's been a huge uh, push and trend, uh, even within the church world, of idolatry uh, in the areas of money, fame, and attention. Everybody's chasing after money. Uh, and of course, not everybody. I'm using that, that loosely. But there's so many people chasing after money. So many people chasing after fame. We got to make sure that we consecrate the Lord God in our hearts, that we sanctify him in our hearts. And we're not chasing after things. We're not chasing after money. We're not trying to get fame and attention to affirm some rejection that's in our own soul. And so there is an overhaul that's going on in believers right now because the Lord's got to be able to trust you for your assignment to be accomplished. And in order for him to give you more, you got to make sure your heart is right. So you got to break the love of money. We cannot love it. We cannot chase after it. We cannot lust after it. Then the Bible tells us this. First Peter 5 and 2 says, don't be greedy for money. Don't be such a greedy person that you, you, you just want to get as much as you can get. Uh, some things the Lord has told me, walk away from that. There are deals. I have uh, many businesses. There are deals that uh, were lucrative deals. The Lord told me, don't take that deal. I don't want you to do it. And I said, but God, are you sure there's so much money in that? He said, uh, money is not your motivator. And so when you come to the place where purpose is your motivator and money is not your motivator, it'll change everything. You'll be willing to walk away from what looks like it's more so that you're taking less. But really, uh, you are storing up treasures in heaven for yourself. And that is the key. Money cannot be the thing that motivates you. You've got to be motivated by purpose, by the spirit of the living God. I want to give you these last few points and then I'm done. Uh, so listen to this. Uh, the Bible tells us this in Proverbs 13 and 11. And this really uh, begin to uh, just make this so plain for me. In the ESV, it says this, dishonest money dwindles away. But whoever gathers money little by little, it grows. Dishonest money dwindles away. you got to make sure that the things we're doing now with our money is not dishonest because the Lord's getting ready to prepare you for millions. He's going to prepare you for mega. And if he can't trust you with the 500 you have, he's not going to trust you with the 5 million. 
If he can't trust you to be honest in your business dealings with what you currently have, then he's not going to trust you to be a steward over more. If you can be found faithful over the little, he says, then I'm going to make you ruler over much. And so you don't want dishonest money because it brings about a spiritual curse on the individual. You don't want dishonest money. You don't want to cheat for it. You don't want to lie for it. You don't want to steal in order to get it because the Bible tells us this in Proverbs 13 and 11 in the ESV. If it is gotten dishonestly, it will literally begin to dwindle away from you. Anything that you get dishonestly, it brings about a spiritual curse on that person. God's not putting the curse on you. It is a spiritual law. So when you breach a law, the Bible says, he that breaks a hedge, a serpent will bite. When you breach a spiritual law, it then activates a consequence because of the spiritual law that has been broken. And so, Father, we repent for breaching spiritual laws. We ask for your forgiveness. We lay it aside and we thank you for removing and breaking every demonic curse that the enemies tried to bring upon us and that we brought upon ourselves in Jesus name. Listen, some of you, as you begin to pray that I see the curses breaking off of you. And now you've got to begin to go forward in God's way. We must begin to do it in the way of the Lord because he's preparing you for more, but you've got to be found faithful over what you have. Listen, I want to give you this as well. These are pointers to prepare you for the greater that's about to come. Uh, you've got to make sure James five and four through six, it says pay what you owe to others. You've got to be the person of integrity. And if you're struggling with it, we got to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to help us pay what we owe to others. This is something that we all must do. We all, uh, many of us have debts and we've got creditors and we've got, we've got to put a plan together. And some are saying, Lord, I'm believing you for debt cancellation. And it has come to many. I've given prophetic words to people and they came back and showed me that they had uh, tens of thousands of dollars canceled where the companies just said, all of a sudden, we're going to erase this debt for you. But then there was another kind of debt cancellation where the Lord gives you the money to pay it off. And some of you are saying, well, God, erase it. And the Lord is saying, I'm going to do even better than that. I'm going to bless you so good that it's not going to hurt you to pay off every debt that you have. I'm going to bless you so well that you're going to pick up the phone and call your creditors and say, I got all of the money that, that I owe you and I'm paying it all off today. Isn't that a testimony? I mean, can you imagine how that feels to, to call your creditors? Uh, the Lord blessed me uh, 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 in a way where I, I've been doing that. I was able to call creditors some time ago. And I said, I know I owed you this uh, in a student loan, but I want to pay all of this off. I'm paying it off today. And God only gets the glory for it because it's him that gives us the power uh, to get wealth. It's only God that gives us the ability to get it. And I'm telling you, he's about to command hell to spit out what it stole from you. Some of you have, have experienced in your life, since you were a child, the enemy stealing from your family, the enemy stealing from your parents, the enemy stealing from your bloodline. It's gone back generation after generation. And some of us have perpetuated that same cycle uh, due to broken spiritual laws, due to sin, due to so many other things. But the Lord's about to cause hell to spit it all out. It's about to come back to you. And you're going to be the example in your family. You're going to be the one that breaks the barrier in your bloodline. You're going to be the one that stands up and say, our family, our bloodline is going to serve the Lord. And look at the blessing of the Lord that is coming into our hands because of it. I'm giving you this last point and I'm closing this. Uh, when it comes to the blessing of the Lord, you must plan to manage the blessing. Write your plans down now. If the Lord's promised you anything, if he's put any vision in your heart, go and write it down. How am I going to manage it? What am, how am I going to manage the, the funds that he's going to give me? How am I going to manage the increase? I remember the Lord told me to do this. He said, write down a plan. I had zero dollars in my account. I, I was so broke. I was beyond broke. My account was probably negative. He said, go and write the plan. He said, I want you to begin to write out what you're going to do uh, with this amount of money that, that's going to be released to you. I said, well, God, that, that amount sounds so much, is, it sounds far-fetched. But I began to write out a plan. I said, okay, I need to have offices because I got to hire people. I'm going to have these businesses and companies. And I start writing it out. I wrote out budgets. I wrote out the people I was going to hire. I wrote out how much they were going to get paid. I, I wrote out what my overhead was going to be monthly. 
And I stepped back from it after I wrote it out and I said, God, that sounds impossible. But the Bible says nothing is impossible if we have faith. If we just believe the Lord, nothing will be impossible. That plan that I wrote out uh, was some 10 years ago. 10 years ago, I began to write that plan. I said, God, okay, you told me to do it. I'm writing it out. That means 10 years ago, my account was negative, negative, negative. Uh, and I said, God, what am I going to do? You gave me this vision. He said, believe me for it. Now begin to put action behind these this plan that you wrote. Put, break it down into measurable goals. Things that you can do little by little by little by little. Within a few short years, I watched the Lord take everything in that plan and bring it to life for me. Literally everything that I wrote down on that list, he did in, in a matter of a few short years. I'm not bragging on me. I didn't do it. I'm telling you that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the true God of Israel, the one that we serve, the one that we love, he gave me the ability, he gave me the plan, and he's going to do the same thing for you. There are many of you watching me right now, and you are in the worst situation. You're saying, God, how is it going to happen? The Lord's not going to owe any man anything. There's some stuff that that should have been done to your given to your grandparents to your grandmother to your grandfather to your great great grandparents that was owed to them that they left this earth and they never got it but you are in the bloodline and it's getting ready to come back to you i found that many of the blessings that the lord began to release they were not my own they were blessings that were owed to my family and the Lord said, now I can trust you if you follow my plan with it. And so the Lord began to bring about release. I'm telling you, many of you are going to, to see the same thing. Write your plan now because this year is gonna change many people's lives. I know it sounds far-fetched to some of you. I know it sounds like a cliche to some of you, but I'm telling you, many of you, your lives are about to be changed for the better. You're about to see the Lord take and turn everything around for you. And you're going to be put in a position where you will be able to help other people. And when God blesses you, do not become stingy. When the Lord blesses you, do not become the person that holds everything and you hoard everything. Remember where you came from. Remember where you came from. Remember how you struggled and how you suffered. Remember all of the, the times where you didn't know where the money was going to come from. When the Lord blesses you, he's blessing you so that you can help others. That is the love of Yeshua. That's the love of Jesus Christ in us. When we love like that, he says, I'll trust you to get it to you so I can get it through you. I needed to get on here and give this word. And I want you to remember that God is going to command the enemy to spit out what belongs to you. Everything that belongs to you is coming back to you in this season. I decree it. I prophesy over your life. If you'll follow the will and the word of God, you will see it manifest in Jesus name. Listen, I got to close this. I told you I wasn't going to be here long and I'm on here longer than what I planned, but typically I'm on here for more than an hour. Uh, so I'm going to end it right here. And I pray that you get this, this word, that you take it, that you receive it, and that you see the manifestation of it in your life. If you're blessed by what was shared here and you believe the word of the Lord, I want you to share this if you're led to on your social media platform. Share it on Facebook. Uh, hit subscribe if you're watching this from uh, YouTube or any other platform. Share it with other people. Tag them in and let them know this is a word for your now. It's where you're walking into. It's what you're about to see. And for those of you that don't have it, uh, go and get my, my latest book that's out. It's called Mantle for Greatness. It teaches you how to manage the greatness of God. I share candid stories in this on how the Lord brought me from nothing uh, and begin to give me business ideas that cause wealth to come into my hands and how I've used it for the kingdom of God and still do to this very day. If you want to get it, it's available. It's actually in stores. You can go to Barnes and Noble in their store locally in your state. It's everywhere in Barnes and Noble. Go into the Barnes and Noble store or order it on Amazon. Many of you already have it. Thank you for making this number one. You guys made it number one for many months and I appreciate that. And then those of you that are joining us at Mantle, so many of you registered. Uh, we literally over the past week, we've gotten uh, so many hundreds and I believe even thousands more of you that registered over the past uh, couple of weeks, the past few weeks for Mantle 2024. It is our gathering for revival. This is where we bring thousands of people together from around the country and around the world. And it's an experience like no other. We come together to seek the face of God. We're coming to hear from God. And I'm going to be sharing uh, along with other prophets that we're bringing into this meeting. I'm going to be sharing 
sharing with you what the Lord is downloading for our nation, uh, for the body of Christ, what I've heard uh, for the next several years. I'm going to be sharing key insight when I'm talking about uh, visions that the Lord has given me concerning blackouts and war and some of these things. We'll be able to talk about it in a more detailed way uh, there where we won't be censored online. It's going to be a more detailed way all in person. Some of you will be able to watch privately online, but it's going to be an in-person gathering. And we are almost filled up and it's happening July 10th through the 13th. We're almost completely filled. It's going to be in Atlanta, Georgia at the State Farm Arena. Because of so many of you that registered in advance, we had to bring it to an arena because we needed the space for you. And listen, this is going to be a, a gathering like no other. We've got some of the leading uh, voices that the Lord's using right now, prophets, apostles, pastors, leaders. We also have some of the leading praise and worship uh, uh, singers that touch the heart of God. I'm not talking about people that entertain you. I'm talking about people that know God for real in their time of prayer, and they come and give out of that. We're bringing them together. We're going to let God flow. This is not going to be tied down to a program. If the Lord interrupts our program, we are moving in that. Whatever God says, that's what we're going to do. Uh, we saw so many miracles happened uh, in the last one that we did. And I'm we're praying our team is fasting. We're believing God uh, for this gathering. For those of you that feel that, like the Lord wants you to be there, I want you to register. I don't want just everybody coming to this. I want people that are hungry for God. I want people that are saying, Lord, I, I feel like I need to be in the place and I want to be a part of the move that you're bringing. Uh, if that's you, I want you to go to joshuagiles.com and I want you to click on mantle and I want you to register and make plans now. We partner with Delta uh, Airlines to give you discounts to fly you, to help you fly in from wherever you're coming from. So you'll see that information. It's on my site. It's also there. If you call my office, they'll be able to give that to you. Uh, so make sure to join us July 10th through the 13th at the State Farm Arena in Atlanta, Georgia, but you got to register. Uh, we, again, we are almost, we're about 75% filled in that arena. You're talking about thousands of people. We're, we're almost filled with not announcing any speaker, not announcing any singer. We've not advertised this. We've not put any advertising dollars into this. We've not put it on TV. It's not been on the radio. It's not even, it's barely been advertised on social media. I've not paid for that at all. We simply put up uh, uh, an original uh, a flyer, just putting the dates and the information there. And I'm telling you, uh, people are hungry for God. They don't want, we're in a day now where people are not wanting the entertainment. We can get that through TV. We, we're in a day now where people are like, I want God for real. I want to come to a place that's not focused on uh, amassing money. It's not focused on uh, entertainment and performance, but it's focused on what the spirit of the Lord wants to do. And that's my focus and intent uh, for Mantle. We already met the budget for Mantle last year. So we're not going into this gathering in debt. It's already been paid for uh, because the Lord allowed people to fund it, to invest in it and fund it uh, before we ever got into it. Can you imagine a gathering where we're not gathering and we're under the strain of a budget? We're not saying, oh God, we got to pay this. No, we come in to seek the face of the Lord. And I'm so excited about this. I cannot wait uh, for, for Mantle. So again, those of you that want to come meet me there. I'm finished. I'm going to let y'all go. God bless you, everybody. I'll catch you next Monday if the Lord says the same.